Good morning and welcome to the Trinity Sunday mini broadcast from St Peter's but also for St Mary's and St Andrew's. Two of today's uh, readings speak to us of the Trinity. There are Jesus' words recorded by St Matthew in the Great Commission to go and make disciples of every nation, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Then there are St Paul's words of blessing to the Corinthian church. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, he ended his letter. The Trinity does not get much explicit mention in the Bible, but Orthodox Christianity is steadfastly Trinitarian. As a doctrine, it can seem confusing to us, but why is the doctrine of the Trinity so important? I think the answer is that it presents most accurately the reality of the God of the Bible to us. And that matters because we are called into relationship with that God. The Bible is clear that God is love. We all like that. And Jesus demonstrated what love looks like. But a solitary God cannot be love because real love requires relationship. The doctrine of the Trinity shows us how from eternity Father, Son and Holy Spirit have been in community, in relationship with each other. They have loved each other. So the Trinity is the answer to the deepest longing of the human heart. It clarifies the question and makes us go deeper than sentimental notions or elusive emotions. We're all looking for love. Deep down we all need it in ways we don't understand or even acknowledge. We search and find glimpses, moments, tastes, samples of love. We have genuine experiences of human love and yet God's love still calls to us. Greater love has no one than this, Jesus said, that someone lay down their life for their friends. Self-sacrificial love is the ultimate love. Now imagine that the one who is love sacrificed himself. Imagine that the eternal loving fellowship of the divine community of Father, Son and Holy Spirit sent out one of their own to die, not just for friends but also for enemies. Well that is precisely what happened. The second person of the Trinity, the Son of God, Jesus, takes on flesh, becomes a human being and comes both to reveal the Father to us and to die for us on the cross. As someone has written, that he who is true love might show true love and give true love, so that we might finally know true love. This is the hope of all humankind, that the doctrine of the Trinity would come to life by welcoming us into the community of love that God has enjoyed since before time began. C.S. Lewis put it well when he said, the thing that matters is being actually drawn into that three personal life. So the Trinity is best understood, not in words on paper, not in theorising, but in experience. The Trinity is best understood by our experience of Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We experience the person of Jesus and the love of the Father through the same Holy Spirit. We ask Jesus into our hearts and our lives and he comes to us 
by the same Holy Spirit. We ask for a touch of the Father's love, and the Spirit pours that love into our hearts. We ask for his fruit and his gifts to continue the work that Jesus began and to do what the Father has prepared for us in this world. And so on this Trinity Sunday, let me encourage you to seek to experience more of Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And I'm going to finish with a prayer suggested by theologian M.T. Wright. Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, set up your kingdom in our midst. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Holy Spirit, breath of the living God, renew me and all the world. Amen. And now a song called Let Your Living Water Flow Over My Soul. Let your living water Jesus
Now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always, this day and forever. Amen. <laughs>